Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install Hawk Performance ceramic brake pads on a C7 Corvette. do to do this brake change on, this, on the C7 Corvette. Um, one, you're going to need a low profile jack um, to be able to get underneath the car and be able to get it lifted up safely. And then you're going to want to make sure that you have jack stands to be able to put underneath the car while you've got it up and with the wheels off. Now, today I'm going to be replacing the front and the rear pads and I'm also going to be replacing the front rotors. The rotors were used up on this car pretty bad. The, the uh, rear ones are still in really good shape, so I'm not replacing those. Um, as far as tools are concerned, you don't really need a whole heck of a lot of tools to be able to do this. You're going to have to be able to jack it up. You're going to have to be able to take the wheels off. Okay, those are pretty simple, simple deals right there. The only other thing that I can think of that you're going to need, you're going to need a hammer, and you're going to need a punch uh, that has a hollow tip up in the front. The Brembo brake system has two chrome pins that actually lock the pads in place with a spring and those are pushed in from the back side of the, of the caliper. And so, of course, you've got a nice pretty painted caliper and you don't want that to get jacked up. So if you try to use a, um, a, flat, uh, a flat or a pointed uh, punch to be able to pop those back out, it's going to slide off and, and then it's going to end up chipping your paint. So you can get these at Harbor Freight. I picked up this little kit right here. Um, bring it up to the camera so you can see that. It was a whole $3.99, okay? And it has the hollow tips at the top so you'll be able to set, center that right on the, um, on the pin itself and just tap it back out. And it's not going to take a lot of pressure to do it. It just locks, them, locks the uh, spring in place and holds the pads right where they're supposed to be. So that, besides this and a hammer, that's about all you're going to need. Now, let me talk about what all we're, what we're doing here. Um, when I decided I was going to um, get the get new rotors, boy, I was in I was in f uh, fun land trying to figure this out. Apparently, 2014s have a cross year, maybe two different versions, possibly even three. Um, so even by going by VIN number, when I uh, called uh, GM Parts and talked to them, I tried to do it off their, their website and they gave me two different variations, actually three different variations for my car. Now hopefully you don't have that issue, but on mine they made a one that has a, it's a, almost a two-piece design of the rotor, which is what I have, that has nine spokes. So you have a center hub and then you have the outer rotor. Now, apparently next, the next generation of them, they got rid of that and it is more of a solid rotor, just traditional. Uh, and so I didn't know which one to get. So we were able, I was able to go, have to go look at my car and be able to tell them what I was seeing. Then they were able to give me the right part number. Now, something else that I want to point out, um, cause when I do these, when I do all this stuff, I try to make sure that you guys know how to go about doing it, but how to be able to save some money in the process. Now, I called my local dealer here in Sacramento. Now, if you'd seen my other video where I was, uh, well, I haven't even edited it yet, but I did, did a battery change out, and the battery was actually cheaper at the dealer than it was anywhere else. But when I called the dealer this time for the rotors, they wanted $187 a rotor. Now, I was able to get a genuine AC Delco part, exactly what I was going to get from the dealer from online, and this was happened to be through Van Chevrolet um, in, um, in Arizona, and they sold them to me for $100.93 a piece. Now that's a significant change, and they got, that's way cheaper, right? And they got them to me within a couple of days. So me not being in a super hurry, it wasn't a big deal. So. I basically almost got one rotor completely free. So just just keep in mind, do a little bit of shopping um, and you'll be able to you'll be able to do that. And of course we're going to be doing the Hawk Performance brake pads, the ceramic pads. 
Now, the reason that I went with this is last year when, uh, when I went, when Jennifer and I went to SEMA, um, there was a representative there from Hawk. I was able to uh, talk to them. I was able to get some information about them. Um, and a big part of this is that they are a very high performance pad, but they're also very, very low dust. And any of you guys that are, are still working on your, your uh, the pads that you came, that came with the car, the Brembo pads that came with the car, you know what I'm talking about. You know that there's, you can drive it 25 feet and you've already got, already got brake dust. And so mine's no different. And I love my chrome wheels. I'm sure you guys love yours, whether they're black or chrome or carbon flash or whatever they are, but it irritates the heck out of you that you can't keep them clean. I mean, I polish my car out before I go to a car show. I drive to the car show and I got to go wipe them all back down again. So, so basically, um, you're getting the performance, but you're also getting the low brake dust here. And so these happen to be the front ones here. They're a lot bigger, as you can see, as the, as the rears. Um, but they agreed to go ahead and sponsor the channel today and um, I really appreciate that. Uh, Lindsay, I really appreciate it. She's their director of marketing uh, with them and she's, uh, she's supporting the channel and I really appreciate it. So just wanted to be able to get that out and thank you guys for that because without, without our sponsors we wouldn't be able to bring you guys the videos that we do. So I just wanted to thank you ahead of time. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the video now and I'm going to show you just really how simple it is to change these pads and, um, you know, just again, take your time, make sure when you, you know, there's a, there's a spot underneath the car that is made just for the jacking pad. Don't just roll that jack right underneath there and then start jacking up because you'll start messing some things up. But there is a spot underneath there that is plenty big enough to be able to get underneath. So, um, we'll go ahead and we'll jack the car up and we'll start getting things going. So before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Hawk Performance. Hawk Performance has been around about 25 years, a little over that, and they do street pads, they also do track pads. So they're, they've been in the racing business a long time. They know what they're doing with brakes and um, everyone I've talked to, uh, they swear by them. They think they're awesome brakes. Um, I'm tickled to death to be able to put these on today and I'll be able to tell you more um, as we go on um, and I'll bring you an update to that. Um, there are multiple versions of how to, you know, I mean I've got a Z51, the, the Z06 has a set of certain types of brakes on it and also the, um, uh, the Grand Sport and they have, you know, they have brake pads also and they're much bigger. So. Um, as we do this, um, hopefully we'll be able to get sponsorship to be able to do that again and, um, and to, for those cars to be able to show you because they are a little bit different in the, how they're done and, um, and then at that point we'll be able to give you some updates on what, how my brakes are doing. So the first thing you want to do before you start doing the brakes is you want to go ahead and take the cap off of the reservoir here and get it off and then put a towel, a paper towel or something around the the opening here so it will catch any any fluid that might rise to the top and, and overflow so I'm just going to put a paper towel here just to be able to catch that but uh, I don't think I'll have that issue. So now that I've got the cap off the reservoir what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack the car up just a little bit and just to get a little bit of the pressure off of the tire and off the lug nuts and then I'm going to go ahead and take the lug nuts loose before I completely lift the tire up off the ground otherwise I'll be fighting trying to get the lug nuts off. Um, so I'm using a low profile jack that goes right into the jacking point. If you have one of the jacking, uh, the jacking pucks, go ahead and use that. Um, I don't happen to have them, never have had to use them because my, uh, my jack actually has a pad small enough that fits in the right spot. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jack it up a little bit and then we'll take the lug nuts and the tire off. Now one thing you might want to notice here is that I've got the tire turned out like this. So the reason behind that is, is that on the fronts, I'm gonna be changing the, the uh, rotors also. So in order to do that, there's two big bolts that have to be taken off to be able to get the, uh, to get the, the, rotor, it's the rotor off by taking the caliper off. 
and so the, these two bolts hold the caliper and its bracket on and they are extremely tight so if you're you if you're not using impact gun or anything like that and you're doing it by hand you're gonna have to get some leverage here so I've turned the wheel out so I can actually get in here with my breaker bar and be able to have enough leverage to get those bolts loose otherwise you're too tight quartered in here if your wheel is totally straight it's just too tight quartered you're not gonna be able to do it so I just want to give you that a heads up that a heads up ahead of time so you'll have that because we're gonna be jacking this up we're gonna put it on a jack stand and we don't want to be turning the wheels on the car while we're on the jack stand so I'm just jacking the car up here a little bit just enough to get get the weight off but there's the tire will still not spin and at that point we're going to take the take all our lug nuts loose okay just like that and at that point we can go ahead we can continue to jack the car up Now I would advise that you get underneath the jack after you've got it up there a little ways. And just double check to make sure that your jack hasn't slid, it hasn't moved, everything's working okay. You can get it up off the ground. Now the, the tire itself is off the ground, it can spin now. So we can go ahead and we can take the lug nuts off. So we now got our lug nuts off here and so I'm going to go ahead and pull the tire off. And once we get the tire up out of the way, um, just like so, we'll get it out of here. Now before I put it all back together, I've got a car show coming up uh, in a couple of days. I'm filming this on Friday and I've got a car show on Sunday and I'm going to go ahead, before I put everything back together, I'm going to wipe everything down. Everything's going to get all nice and clean in here on the caliper and then I'm going to take the, the wheel itself out, uh, out on the grass and I'm going to wash everything down, all the nooks and crannies in where the, where the lug nuts go, all in the back and inside on the back side of the rim so we'll get it all looking nice and shiny again. But anyway, so this is what she looks like with the, with the wheel off. So we're just going to take, I'm going to put a, a jack stand underneath here. And I put it, I put that jack stand right underneath the spring, right in front, directly right in front here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my GoPro here, and then that way you should be able to get a good, good view of the backside, so you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. Our next thing that we want to do is that we're going to have to drive these two little pins right here out, and those are going to drive out and come out the back side and then we'll pull them out. And those are what holds this spring down, which holds the pads in place. So now you don't want to, these are a, a, a sharp point or a little little point on these, uh, on these pins. And if you used a flat pin uh, or a flat punch, it would just end up probably scratching, you know, chipping your, your the paint on your caliper. So you can get these uh, at Harbor Freight and they just have a little indention right here in the end of the tip so that way you can put it right here on the tip of it and it's not going anywhere and then that way you can actually hit it here with your hammer so drive them through now I'm gonna do that with these and then I'm gonna follow it with a smaller a smaller tip that will go all the way through pretty much driving them all the way out because these aren't it tapers too much so it won't go all the way through. And it goes through like so. Just like that. Okay, so now at that point we've got these two pins here. As you can see right here, hopefully on the GoPro that you can see those. Okay, we're going to pull those out. I use some pliers here. You can use whatever you need to use just to be able to get get on them and pull them out. Now you can help by hitting this spring. You can push the spring in a little bit with your finger. These springs are pretty tight, but you can pull them, pull these pins out. You want to make sure that you don't pinch your finger in there. So just 
get it right to that point there. You can pull the pin right out of there. Yeah. And do the same thing on this one. Just like that. Okay. And at that point, what you're going to do is the, the pads themselves are pinched against the rotor right now. So we're going to take and we're going to push the rotor or the pad all the way against the metal of the caliper. Now this is kind of hard to do, putting a lot of pressure here, and you want to make sure that you can see that the spring just kind of popped loose. It was pinned down there below these, below these weights, so you just want to make sure that you don't get your finger pinched in there. You can grab this one, and you're going to pull back, just like so. And you're going to go all the way to the point that it can't go any farther. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go back and you're going to do it again over here because some of the fluid that you pushed out, out from this one went back into the pistons over here. So you're going to push it again and you can see what's happening. And you can slowly move them back until they finally all go into the reservoir. And then you can push, push on one and pull on the other one until you get them both fully compressed. Just like that. Okay. At that point, these little guys come right out. Just like so. We're going to go and we have to take these two bolts right here. Now, if you were just doing a, um, if you were just doing a pad change, it wouldn't be a big deal right now. You'd be almost done already. You would just turn around, clean all this up, and put the new, put the the lube on the, the the grease on the back of the pad, stick the pad back in, put your spring back on, you're good to go. Okay, but um, these rotors are pretty well shot, so I'm decided to replace them. And so, with that being said, we've got to take take the this bolt off, and or these two bolts, I should say, and it's a 21 millimeter bolt. And like I was telling you, the reason that I did this to turn the wheel all the way out is because if without it you can see here there's just no way of getting any leverage if it was turned in there. You probably couldn't even get your, your wrench or your ratchet in there. So so it's here. These two bolts here have to come off. So let's see if I can get myself in this bar and get some leverage here. Okay. It's like so. Now, of course, if you've got an impact gun, you probably could do that, and it'd probably be just fine. But, like I said, I try not to use the impact stuff. But these are tight. And once you get them or they're broke free, then you can turn and Get yourself onto a uh, onto a ratchet and you'll be fine. You want to be careful that you don't catch this brake brake line here. You don't want to break that. Okay, once it gets broke loose. Then I should be able to use a ratchet. The guys, these things really are tight, so just, just be aware of that. Let me see if I might come loose. Now, I changed brakes one time on a C5 Corvette. I had a 99 C5 Corvette, and I changed the brakes on it. And the bolts on the very back, doing this exact thing, were so tight that I could not break them free with a half inch impact gun. Um, I ended up having to take it down to a, a shop and pay them to just break those bolts free and they used a 
30 quarter inch impact gun. It still didn't work. They were so tight. I don't know how they didn't break. They ended up having to use a big old humongous breaker bar that was about three and a half feet long. It was crazy. And the, the guy that was, he's like three times my size, he was hanging off the, off the breaker bar. So it was crazy on how tight that these can get. And I don't think they need to be that tight. Now, what you want to do is you want to make darn sure that you don't drop this caliper. Most likely, the weight of this caliper, if you dropped it, it would break this line. Now you're doing a you know, brake line replacement. Not good. And there's one bolt. one and we're just going to take it off set it off the side we can prop it right up against the a-arm there okay so now we got that done what we've got here let me turn the wheel around a little bit is we've got a t30 torque right here now hopefully you can see that on this camera here there's a t30 torque right here that you're going to have to break free and it shouldn't be that tight, but what I did is I just took a screwdriver and you're going to just wedge your screwdriver here a little bit. See if I can get this where it'll, where it'll hold for me. Okay. I think that did it. Okay. And that's just what's holding the rotor on. Okay. You can take a rubber mallet if it doesn't come free. Oh, this one just came free. Okay, great. If it doesn't, then it's got a little bit of rust or something holding it on. You can just, you just bang it here on the back side of the rotor. It'll pop right off. So, we've got that out of the way. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can put the other, the other rotor on. Here's our other rotor. And we want to line that guide hole that little guy right there to right here where it lines up okay. like so I'm going to put our bolt back in have to be super tight. I mean, if you didn't have this bolt, it's not going to go anywhere once the wheel goes on, but it just keeps everything aligned up when you start to take things apart. So now all you're doing now is you're just reversing all of this. So we're just going to take the caliper and we're just going to set it right back in place. We're going to tighten up the bolts. Just like so. The bolts are exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one is top or bottom. So we got them nice and snug now, but uh, we've got to torque these down. And the torque setting for these is 162 pounds on the front, or 89 for the rears, but we're not going to be doing the rears today, so we're only doing the, the fronts, because we're only doing the pads on the, on the rear. So I've got to get that in there. And it's very, very, very tight clearance here, so... Done. 
There we go. 162. There we go. Okay, so now we've got we got our bolts back on. We've got this all taken care of. So now the only thing that I've got to do now, and I don't really have to do it, but I want to, is I want to wash wash this caliper off, get all the debris off of it. So I'm just going to wipe it down and get it all nice and pretty again. And I've got a. I'm just using glass cleaner here. Just to clean this all up. And I've got a little brush here that I'm just going to use to clean all the little nooks and crannies real quick. So now with all the fact that we've got, we've got rid of these super dusty, dusty brake pads, I'm hoping that we won't have this anymore and I won't have to be cleaning my calipers all the time. So. they'll be nice and nice and clean and stay that way all right so now she is ready for the pads okay so at that point we've got our new pads right here and we're just gonna flip these little guys over we're gonna put some grease on them And you don't have to have a whole bunch of grease. I mean, it's it's all it's it's going to keep the pads from vibrating, but you don't have to put a whole pile of it on there. So you're just putting it on. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can show you that. We're just putting it on here, a light layer here on the backing plate. I'm going to try to make darn sure that you don't get any on the the shoe material itself or the pad material. So just be careful. You don't get your your greasy hands now all over the pad. Okay. So on the front ones, they are the same both ways. It doesn't matter. You can use either one of them. They both have wear indicators. The front the rear ones are a little bit different, but you're just going to take them like so. This is going to be the start side for the, the piston. Gonna slide that in there like so. Now if it's if the piston has relaxed a little bit and some fluid has gotten in there, you just wedge it in there a little bit and then just pull it. Just pull it towards you. And that'll push the piston back in. So then at that point you can put you can push it in. Just like so. Okay. Same thing with this one. I'm just gonna slide it in grease toward the piston, away from the rotor. Just like so. And then you got that all good to go. Now at that point, if you've got some sandpaper, you can use sandpaper or you can just wipe the, the center pins off. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to take and I want to get these things pretty well lined up exactly where they're going to go before I start messing with the spring. Okay, so now we've got our pads in place. We're going to pull our pin back out. And then we're just going to take our spring and we're going to set it in place. Okay, and then we're going to put, we'll put our top, top pin in first. It doesn't really matter which one you put in first. It's just this one's easier for me to do that way. Okay. And I'm just going to get it started just right where it goes. I'll we'll end up having to bang the pin in here in a minute. But I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to push down on this spring. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to push the pin in. Okay. And it's going to go It's going to go into the into the spring there. And I'm just going to tap this. Holding the spring in, I'm going to tap that down. Just like so. Okay. And then you're going to, 
once you get it started, then you have to get these pins driven all the way in. So you're just driving them down the so. Okay. Just a little bit more. So you think that one. And then that's it. Now, what you want to make darn sure of, and I'm going to grab the GoPro now so I can try to show you what I'm trying to say, is hopefully right here you can see that this spring is not quite centered there on, on the, uh, the keeper pin. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that that gets moved over there. So, so that's what keeps it from, from popping loose. So right there, right there, it's in that groove right there and right there. This one's already right where it belongs. So hopefully you can see that. Hopefully I filmed that okay. Other than that, she's done. You can see that these two pins here are now sticking back out where they belong. So now that the brakes are done, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, front tire out in the front yard, clean it all up, and then I'll bring it back and we'll put it back on. Okay, so we've got the wheel all cleaned up and we're going to put it back on. And you do want to take a little bit of care putting it back on with the wheel turned that you're not going to end up hitting your caliper and chipping it. So you just want to be careful. You know, just kind of get it in there and just take your time. And you can turn your rotor a little bit here to get it right where it needs to go. Now if you notice this, I'm tightening these up in a star pattern. That way the tire seats on, or the wheel seats onto the hub um, correctly. It doesn't get bound up in any way. Okay, so now we've got that, we've got it snug. So now that we've got the, the bolts back on the, the tire, they're not, they're not tight, but they're snug. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to get underneath the car and grab the, the jack stand. Get it out of the way. Okay, and then at that point, we can lower the car some. And you probably could lower it all the way down. I just get it just to the point where the tires are touching or I can snug everything up. Okay, so, and I set my lug nuts, I'm gonna torque them down, I'm gonna, I set them to 100 pounds. And then once I get them all, I go around them again, just double check them. Make sure I didn't get a false positive on the click. We are good to go. Alright, so we've got our jack right where it goes. We're going to go ahead and we're going to jack the car up here. Tire off the ground. Okay. Make sure that she isn't moving all over the place. Everything's jacked up, safe. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put a jack stand underneath here. Get all my stuff out of the way so I can actually get over there. Just don't want this thing coming down on us. And then we're going to go ahead and crack the bolts loose. Now we're only replacing the pads in the back, so it's going to go a lot faster than our front ones did. It's going to be a lot easier. But the rotors weren't in as bad shape. They were in actually pretty good shape. So, which you'll probably find that out yourself. The fronts do most of the braking, so they don't wear out the backs that often. 
And again, once I get this all done, I'll take this wheel out and we'll scrub it down with one of the uh, Mr. Clean pads on the inside and get rid of all the debris on the inside. Because I'm going to be taking it to a car show, like I mentioned before. I want to make sure that we might be able to score a few extra points. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do after we've got the, the wheel off, we've got it jacked up, got the wheel off, and we've got the, the jack stand in place, is that we need to remove these two pins right here. Hopefully the GoPro is showing those right there and there. And we're going to use our punch that has a, a centering point in it, it's recessed. And we're going to use our hammer. And we're going to tap those in. Like so. Make sure you get them on there so it ends up getting the caliper itself. Then we're going to follow it with a, another punch that will go all the way through. And that's driving those, those pins out the back side. See if we can get it all the way in there. There we go. So then at that point, let me see if I can get the, the GoPro around here so you can see. And again, this is very much like just like the front ones. Let's see if we get the camera around there so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So you can see these two pins is what we just drove out. So we're going to take her pliers, in this case just some, some dikes here, we're just going to pull those out. Like so. Okay. And then that releases the spring. This one will just basically come right out. Okay. Now you can see here that the pads are in place. So all we're going to do, they're, you know, they're compressed. So we want to make sure that we make room for the new pads because the new pads are going to have a lot more a lot more meat on them. So what we want to do is we want to take and we're going to grab this side and we're going to pull back toward the red part of the caliper. And we're going to push this one that way to compress the pistons. So we're just going to take, take our hands, we're just going to squeeze them, just go slow. You probably can see that, that it's, that it's moved over. Do the same thing on this side. Now if you saw I did that, I pushed, pushed this one over this one popped over, popped back out some. So this is the fluid as I pushed it that way came back, rushed back into the piston over here. So you're just going to kind of walk these things back and forth here to the point where you, you'll end up pulling this way and pushing this way at the same time because you're going to try to get the pistons totally compressed. Okay. At that point, you're literally just going to pull them out. It's like so. Now keep in, keep in mind, the outside one is the one that has the, the squeal indicator, the wear indicator on the back. So on the front ones, like we said, they both have them, so it doesn't really matter. You're just going to pull those out. Okay. Then at that point, since we are only replacing the pads on the back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to wipe all this down, get it all nice and clean, and then I'll put the new pads in here in just a second. So those of you that put your car in a car show, this is like the perfect opportunity to be able to get your, your calipers all nice and shiny, show worthy again. And I'm hoping, since we don't, we're not supposed to get the brake dust that we were getting, that we won't have that as an issue anymore and that we'll be able to won't have to worry about that. So you can do these brake pads pretty fast if it's all you're doing is just the brake pads. Um, you know, I, I saw some videos out there. Somebody says, oh yeah, you can do brake pads in like nine minutes. Well, yeah, you can probably just do that. You know, if that was all you were doing, you had everything apart, and you start your clock right there, you probably could do that. But, uh, you know, if you're, if you're having to take the time, jack it up, clean it up, do it all the right way, it's going to take you a little bit longer than that, but these things don't take that long. Okay.
Now all we have to do is we've got to take take our pads. And remember the the one with the indicator, the brake, the wear indicator is the one that will go on the outside edge. The one without will go on the back side. So we're just going to take some grease. We're going to put the grease on the the backing plate. Like that. You don't have to get carried away with that grease, that's more than enough. You're just going to take your finger and you're just going to smear it all over the backing plate. You want to make sure that you do not get this on the actual brake surface itself. You don't want it, you don't want it on here. Okay. This is going to keep the brakes from squeaking on you, rattling. Okay. Wipe that off. Literally, this side is going to go toward the piston right here. You can see right here, this is going to go toward the piston. This is going to go in like so. Like our outside pad, it's going to go like so. Put it in there like that. Okay, and then we're going to take our pins and we're going to just line them up. We're going to make sure that everything lines up ahead of time. Okay. So we don't have to fight that when we have the spring going in there. So that should be good like that. See that? So then at that point, we're going to take our spring. Put that in like so. to take this pin here, I'm going to push down on this spring and go through like so, just like that. Okay, and see how that just went right in. So at that point, all we have to do is just tap, tap the pins in with a hammer. Now we just have to tap our pins in with a hammer here. Now when you guys go to do this, it's going to be much easier to do. I'm trying to do it keeping my head out of the way and, and um, you know, everything else. So it's, it is a little bit, a little bit harder here. It looks, looks a little more tough and it is kind of trying to stay out of your guys' way here. Hopefully the camera is picking this all up. I think it is. Okay, and you're wanting to make sure that this pin goes all the way in where it's sticking out on the other side over here. Okay, and we're almost there. So we got our tire all nice and our wheel nice and cleaned up now. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this little guy back on. Okay. Let's put our lug nuts back on. And again, we're doing this in a star pattern here, so that way it centers the the rim on the hub so we don't end up seating it the wrong way. Ends up driving down the road like an egg. Then once we get them all snugged up, then we can go ahead. And we can we can get the uh, torque wrench on it. And we can get the jack stands out from underneath it. And the 
again, we're torquing this to 100, 100 foot pounds. And we're good. And we just got to let her down off, off the jack. And there we go. And then we have one last thing after we've got all the brakes done, cars back down level. We just want to take our little rag here that we had put here to catch any anything that was going to come out, any extra. I didn't have that. I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on, and we're done. If for some reason you were low, uh, low fluid, you would want to go ahead and tap it back off. But m most likely, like in my case, it was low just because the pistons were down because of the size of the brakes. So once I've brought them back up to new, uh, the fluid is right up at the neck where it belongs. Okay, so now we are doing the break-in of the pads themselves, and what we have to do is we're supposed to go anywhere from 6 to 10 times at about 35 miles an hour, and then gradually, moderately come to a stop. So we're coming up to, get up here to 35 miles an hour, and then we're going to slow, moderately slow down. come to a stop or close to it and we'll get out out to the main road here this what well, we're gonna do three hard stops from about 45 miles an hour be bedded at this point and they 
they feel really good. They've stopped stop on a dime, so the car's not pulling. Everything's great. I just want to take a second and thank Lindsay over at Hawk Performance for sponsoring the Corvette channel today. Without your sponsorship, we wouldn't be able to do awesome videos like we did today showing how to do these brakes, as well as all of our other sponsors that help us along the way. We just wouldn't be able to bring the top quality video that we've been bringing. So, guys, thank you all for sponsoring the Corvette channel, and I really, really appreciate it. I hope you know that. The Corvette channel is growing every day, and I really appreciate all of your support. If you guys haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell button so you'll know that when I put in a video up, you'll get notified. But tell your friends. It's growing all the time. I appreciate it. I love it. It's becoming quite, quite the little family. I really appreciate it. We started a Facebook group, and it's growing also. So if you guys have questions, you want to see something, you want to have a question about something that I did on this video or other videos, reach out to me on the Corvette Channel's Facebook group. Reach out to me here on a comment on, on this particular video. And I will be putting all of the description of all of the part numbers for the brakes, the front and rear brakes on this, so you'll have them also. Okay. But again, if you happen to have a 2014 and you're having some sort of problem trying to figure out which pad you need, reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you. Okay, I went through it. We figured it out. And, and so, as you can see, they're all done and they're all going. So, um, not a problem after all. So that's how you change the front and rear brakes on a C7 Corvette. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and be sure and hit that bell so you'll be informed of our next uploads. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great night. So guys, I've got an update for you on the brake pads. We just got done with a three-day trip up to Oregon for the Southern Oregon uh, uh, Corvette Association's Corvette Weekend, and we put a little over 700 miles on the car, and I cleaned the car up on Saturday to be able to do the, uh, the car show itself, so the wheels were nice and shiny chrome then, and then we went ahead and we put about 350, 360 miles on it coming back home, and the pictures that you're about to see are what we had when what the wheels looked like when I got home. Fine, fine little dusting of, of uh, dust on the wheels uh, look like the typical what it used to look like when I drove 25 miles. So I am extremely happy. The wheels look nice and shiny still and it was a great idea that I went ahead and I put these on. So Hawk does say that it's light dusting. They're not fibbing. So if you want to get rid of that problem with your car Go ahead and get a set of those and you will be happy, I guarantee you. So guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Have a good night.